right a little? To your left. To your left. I'm sorry. Sound speeds. Wait. Ten, or I'm sorry, one zebra. Take one, Camera. or take two. Uh, that, was, uh, that was not the mark there. Slate again. <laughs> one zebra, take two. Oh. Fingers. Step. Fingers, fine. Okay. Camera. Speeding. They had very sharp burrs on their ramp at the top of the ramp at the spring here. And that's all it takes to make a smoother turning spring and easier to adjust, that's for sure. It won't be clicking and clacking while you're trying to get attention on it. Uh, another thing, since these are mismatched, uh, the clutch screw nuts, two of them have big dimples on them. One of them has no dimple at all. So the ones with the big dimples are going to make a clicking sound even going over the ramps and the ramps interact with the dimple so that the clutch nut can't back off in theory. This one's been mutilated. I'm going to go find another one in my bolt box because I know I have Triumph clutch nuts I've looked at over the years that I wish I could use because they were clean. And I'm going to replace this one with a proper one. So I'll be back in a second. Now, if you really like British bikes and uh, you're going to be interested in them and working on them for a long time, like this guy, you've got to have a bolt box. And this is my bolt box, well, one of them. I have another one that's about three times the size of this, but it's a bit harder to get through. So, how many bolts would you like with your lunch, sir? I'm going to find this clutch nut hopefully in here. And that's the great thing about bolt boxes is that you have all kinds of different parts that are so unique you would never know what they were necessarily for until you needed it. And then it would make, make sense. Uh, there are some nice things in here. I remember. I got decompressor lever I thought. But oil feed here. Clutch perches, and I'm pretty sure there is clutch nuts in here, so I'm going to take a look. This is a nice find. Looks like a brand new, or NOS, front brake cable holder for the front brake that is on these brakes of my bike and this 750 Triumph Bobber. And, uh, I do hard soldering, silver soldering with jewelry solder, uh, hard, medium, and soft, or soft it comes in, and you use borax flux, you know, self-pickling, and uh, I use hard solder. It takes you know, a little bit more medium will work, but hard solder is guaranteed to be very strong, won't break. That I've ever broken, and I've only broken cables, aftermarket cables, uh, I've frayed cables that I have made because the pressures could fray the cable before they would break the actual nipple off so this one is used I can see a little ding here but I think I'll be making a new cable for the uh, 441 real soon it's our tea break quite a night on the old bike there I'm gonna do a bit of a cleanup and uh, we'll do the fuel thing tomorrow maybe I'll do a little reading 1929 Harley Davidson Enthusiast. Good economy check here. Uh, nine years ago, sold about six of the seven of these. About $95 each. Small little booklet. And uh, glad I photocopied them because uh, was, uh, now they're only about 15 to 25 bucks on eBay. Uh, but they're great for historical reference and excellent for checking out pictures of bikes that are the real deal. And uh, this is a good one. Huh. Seattleites.
1929 program planned up to September 15th, boys, and they did not leave out anything. It's a full menu. The club sends out these printed programs to every motorcycle prospect, which is a good way to tell the folks that there's fun in this motorcycling sport. So the word prospect was first a, a enthusiast term. There you go. Just on my break, I'm looking at the front end here. Look at that, man. Like, like, it was written for like six blocks, not even. You know, uh, under 40 miles at least, like, like 25, I would say. If, if, that's my estimate, if it was written, but this, the, the seals are already leaking. I just got a call or a message from the owner saying, check the seals. And look at that, man. Completely weather-checked gaiters on here, man. Let's look at my gaiters. Sure, I have amalgam rubber tape on them and stuff. But look at it. This is the minimum. The minimum. These are old BMW gaiters in there checkered. These are probably 30 years old, and they look better. Anyways, we're going to fix this up and uh, make it proper. The bike deserves it, as well as the owner. Check that out, man. Check that grease out there. I wonder if grease would actually work as a cheat around seals on forks when you're selling a bike. Hmm. That's something to consider. Zip tie. Zip tie there. So. And this zip tie has just come off. <laughs> Keep going. How harsh is this? I found a spring with the uh, ramps on it, which I could have used if I had known it was here. But I have not found a clutch nut for it. Uh, I had some brass ones, so I'm going to go find those in the other bolt box. This is a really nice little piece here. It's got a safety wire through the top as well. So there's a lot of really good crown nuts and stuff in here. And I'm going to get one of the uh, local can collectors in the area, a guy I wave to every day, to uh, sort this into sizes, basically. And there's that decompressor lever. It looks like it might even be, like, from AJS era or Gold Star era. It doesn't look like a Gold Star decompressor, but it looks also a little bit tweaked. So, all kinds of things in the uh, bolt box here. Okay, we've got the front test fitted here with our annealed washer and it got a lot tighter this time and as well I let the Permatex dry on both edges so it's now a gasket. Now with this I'm going to put on some Loctite because we don't want these falling off and the lack of threads in there in the design basically means that you have more likelihood of it coming out and loosening. So we'll get this buttoned up just as we're finishing our clutch nut search, which didn't work out. I looked for about 20 minutes or 30 minutes <laughs> just to help the guy out with the stockness of the bike. And when I find it, I will put it aside. But I did find a brand new B50 clutch nut in really, really nice shape. So a little rustier surface rust. But so I got rewarded for my efforts. Now, again, we'll use the uh, Loctite in the syringe. And we'll just apply threads one and two. We won't do too much because we're dealing with an area with a rocker box. We do not want Loctite getting into the rocker box. Not a good idea. So I would not inject Loctite around the rocker tappets. 
I think it would probably get chewed up pretty easily, but again, it's not good to be that sloppy on somebody else's bike especially. So we're applying a little bit of Loctite to the clean threads here. The first two threads there, and the last, the third, which will be the actual engaging thread. Concentrating on the outer, th or the threads closest to the head first, because the inner threads are going to be closest to the tappet. So, let's put that in now. And, uh, a record of me using a closed-end spanner. <laughs> I don't think this was hooked up, because I think it did more than one mile, 1.8 miles. But look at this. It, this is... Full adjustment of the front brake, man. Ready to come out. And when it's all the way down, this has not been touched by anybody, not the original buyer and not the second buyer or owner. I have no idea how that front brake could have actually worked. No idea at all. It was adjusted to the full length, and if this bike came delivered with this adjusted all the way to the full length, man, gloves are off. It sold a dangerous bike, man. Sorry, but I gotta be honest, I don't care if I sell gaskets that bad for somebody to get hurt. So there it works. Further out, sure it works now. I can still bottom it out though on the rubber. <clears throat> Back to the clutch, which is now actuating. We're gonna kick it over and see how true the plate is. Man, I am out of shape for triumph. 750s. I remember why I got back to doing a decompressed bike. This is going to be challenging. It's late tonight, but clutch is done. Ready to fire it up once the uh, hoses and lines are connected, I guess. Got spark. Good sign. This is the English translation challenge of buying stuff overseas. What a great positive school book for a kid. It's a school book. And it says end of the world on it. It's not the end of the world, despite what you find wrong with your newly purchased British bike.